everybody and welcome back to F1 Manager 2023 or 4. 23? I think it's F1 Manager 2023. I should probably know that. Um, right, it's the start of season 3. Well, it's not. We're three races in to season 3. Four races in actually doing the fourth race. We're at Baku and we have a fantastic driver at our helm. One that I said I would like to get and one that a lot of you said was probably a little bit unrealistic. It's Lando Norris! We have Lando Norris. He is here and oh my god, he is amazing. Um, we are second in the Constructors' standings. Let's go and have a look at it in a bit, bit more deal, right? There we go. We're second in the Constructors' Championship. We are 14 points behind Red Bull after three races, so we're giving them a run for their money. Ferrari down in third, Alpine fourth, Aston Martin fifth, Mercedes have dropped all the way down to sixth, um, and then McLaren still not improving, so you can see why Lando Norris was happy to join Haas. But that's not the end of it, because Lando Norris is top of the Drivers' Championships with 68 points ahead of Max Verstappen and his new teammate, Charles Leclerc, and replacing Charles Leclerc at Ferrari is George Russell, and replacing George Russell at Mercedes is Sergio Perez. So there has been some changes in the teams as well this year, so um, a lot to keep your eye on. But T.A. Porcher up into fifth, 22 points, but Lando Norris is the, uh, the, the leading driver at the moment, which is absolutely crazy. If we go and have a look at the past reports then. Uh, so Sakir Lando Norris won it 1.5 seconds ahead of Charles Leclerc in the Red Bull. Uh, in Jeddah, Lando Norris won it 1.4 seconds ahead of the Red Bull of Max Verstappen. And uh, in Melbourne, well, Max Verstappen won that one 5.5 seconds ahead of Lando Norris. All of that because of a pit stop issue because of the rain. Uh, it basically started tipping it down. Everyone came into pit at the same time and Lando Norris got held as traffic went past him. So um, it would have been a lot closer otherwise than that. But still, two wins and a second place. So three podiums from three is really, really good. Um, other news to update you on, obviously our car is pretty damn good. We're not actually, if we go car analysis here and look at the rank on the grid, you can see we're not actually brilliantly good in anything other than DRS which obviously helps high speed cornering medium speed cornering is all right uh, and total weight as well which is really good but even when you compare us to the Red Bull let's say like Max Verstappen's Red Bull look at the difference they have compared to us it's absolutely crazy they've got a big much bigger top speed better acceleration better DRS effectiveness better cornering for all corners better dirty air tolerance better brake cooling better engine cooling we just have a lighter car than them so it's amazing that we're putting up this much of a fight and credit has to go to the drivers for that as well uh, in terms of what we've got on the car we're still using the number one chassis we've built a new front wing rear wing underfloor and suspension already we have do we have our new side pods ready for this? Yes, we do. So we install both of those on car one and two. That will help with a bit more engine cooling to keep the uh, components in a bit of a better system. We have one new rear wing. I'm not going to put it on for Baku, though, because there is a high risk of it being damaged, obviously. But, um, yeah, we're in a good, really, really good performance. Facilities-wise, we invested loads of money into our facilities. So all of these are pretty much going to be maxed out when these two are finished, which is really good. Uh, for us there staff facilities we've maxed out the team hub maxed out the race simulator don't care about the scouting department uh, and the development facilities the factory is nearly done but they've had to delay its completion because of a uh, structural damage is what it was um and then we're going to focus on things like the design center wind tunnel cfd car parts and suspension simulator with all of our money that we're going to be getting in because we're not really needing to upgrade the car too much we just need to stay ahead of the curb um so next year we've got huge regulation changes coming so i'll probably will do a season four uh, but yeah huge regulation changes coming which means we've got to start our research early as you can see we've got a few things being manufactured to help us out but yeah if we go and look at this the rules and regulations so uh 2026 changes so chassis sees 32 percent uh change in engine cooling 32 percent in airflow 32 30 percent in drag reduction the front wing 49 percent in brake cooling changes that are going to come we're having a huge it's basically an overhaul of the car um is happening so i mean i'm not going to go through all of these but you can see everything having huge changes to it it's it's the the game's way of indicating that 
the whole car is going to shape so change so we know that regulation change happen every year to try and bring it closer together and uh, have a bit more on track racing so that is what is happening in this one but we are going into baku and the reason we're doing baku is because there's a sprint weekend and there is a normal race weekend as well so we will go and set our performance targets for this one and then we'll come back for because there's a sprint and a race we'll probably ignore all of qualifying and just come back for the sprint and then come back for the race so we'll go for that we'll get both drivers into q3 i'm pretty confident of that this season both drivers into q2 uh, we probably won't get the fastest lap but we will get a driver in the or oh, back who's always a risk isn't it we'll go top five just because other people could knock you out as you can see we've got a finishing street position of one of five so far to get in the top five and qualifying we've got to get two drivers in the top 10 twice in a row so that should be fine uh we will be back then we'll go to the race weekend and we'll be back for the sprint race okay so um qualifying done and practice done not my best um really couldn't nail the setups for the car lando i got his fuel all wrong and he retired after q2 or q3 so he's going to be starting 15th but we do have a sprint race to try and try and make up for it and generally around azerbaijan you can just push the soft tires so that is what we're going to do uh, for both drivers just get them pushing see what they can do try and work some magic get up through the field um yeah disappointing for lando car set up 50% set up for poor chair i honestly i just couldn't get it right i just could not get that set up right and it really um well hopefully it doesn't come back to bite him too much in the ass but we'll see the only other thing we can potentially do oh, it's between eight now and i was gonna put new engines in the car but yeah no they'll be all right i mean starting eighth for to isn't too bad he should get up the order a little bit but starting 15th for lando he's going to need to pull out some some worldy pace is what he's going to need for this sprint race so it is the sprint it is baku let's see how we get on five red lights and we are away i'm used to seeing lando on like top two top top maybe front of the grid generally but um yeah we're not uh, on it at the moment as norris Straight off fighting with his old team, but they've replaced him with Albon and K-Mag's gone there as well. Lots of changes. Lots of changes. Uh, we've got Ricardo and De Vries at Alpha Tauri. Ocon and Russell... Uh, Ocon, Ocon and Perez, sorry, at Mercedes. Gasly and Giovinazzi are at Alpine. Piastri has moved to Aston Martin to partner, partner Lance Stroll. Joe has partnered in Mick Schumacher in Williams. Bottas and Sonoda at Alfa Romeo. And I think that's pretty much everybody up to date with what I told you last time as well. Uh, Norris struggling to make some moves here in this very tight street circuit. But it's going to be interesting. T.O. Poor Chair, I think we can just say, you know, don't worry about doing too much with this. Uh, Lando has got a sort of... We need to make Lando do some moves. So let's get him moving and see what he can do. But the first lap of the sprint race, T.O. Poor Chair holding on to eighth. That's totally fine. We generally have a faster car than the mercedes perez should be catchable norris should get i mean points in the sprint is top eight there's a chance we can get both drivers into the top eight in this race so lando has just got past both williams drivers up from uh, yeah 15th all the way up to 12th now so he is starting to make some moves which is good uh tio Porcher is actually he's up ahead of piastri in that Aston Martin trying to chase down Perez he's got a little bit of work to do there but should be okay 15 laps to go Norris really needs to get to Shimeon if he can pass Bottas quite quickly he should then cast, catch the two Alpines and potentially Piastri but it could be a big ask and here is Lando Norris on the back of Valtteri Bottas you'd like to think that down the start finish straight he'll get this done we're actually going to put him on to put both of them on to top up try and get a bit of battery towards the end of the race that we can look to implement um Thierry Porcher is there. You can see he's got Piastri behind him for company, but trying to close the gap on Sergio Perez in the Mercedes. Norris, I'm hoping this is the position Norris can get this done on Bottas, because Bottas shouldn't have DRS here. So it should be... Oh, he does have DRS. He's just snuck into a second. You can see Norris getting the slipstream, trying to come down, not having enough of it into that first corner. But lots of battles happening all around. No incidents yet in Baku, which is always interesting. Right, we've, we've got enough. Um, Keep pushing. We've got enough battery there now for them to to do something. We could manually. Oh, Porcher's just lost a position to Piastri. 
The two youngsters battling it out. You'll get it back, mate. Keep battling. So Lando Norris looks like he is just about to pass Valtteri Bottas, and he does as Tio Porcher gets that place back ahead of Piastri as well. So hopefully Lando Norris can keep this position. Bottas is not giving it up easily as we head down towards the castle section. And uh, it looks like Lando is going to get that done because he's going to be on the inside for this next corner. And then he just needs to get his nose in front before they go into the very narrow castle. There's a little bit of a... Yeah, he's... Oh, they're going too wide. God, that doesn't normally fit. Bottas is hanging on, isn't he? Let's give Lando a little bit of encouragement to use that battery and uh, pull away. If he can just get in front, then I'm happy. And he does. He uses that to get away. Up into 11th, he should now be able to chase Giovinazzi, Gasly and Piastri as poor chair is right on the back of Russell, who's now lost the place to Perez. So look at this for a race here. You've got the uh, the Ferrari of Russell, the Mercedes of Sergio Perez, and the Haas of Tio Porcher all battling it out for what fifth place in this sprint race. And this would be absolutely huge for Theo Porcher if he could get this done with 10 laps to go. Go on, Theo. See what you can do. Go on, make it work. Get Russell. It's, it's just that where Perez is overtaking Russell, we could both get George Russell here, which would be massive. Perez moves over. If Theo Porcher is brave, he can go up the inside. We are. Oh, is that a little bump? No, Russell's still there. I think what we can do, let's let's go medium and neutral and get Porcher to fight for his position a little bit more because he does have the pace. As you can see, Norris has already caught up to the cars in front, or Pierre Gasly in front. He's overtaken Giovinazzi as uh, Porcher makes that one successful up to sick. That's more points for Haas, and we do need it as... Poor chairs. Yeah, you can feel you can feel from this view that it is much more aggressive as we go through the very narrow. Ca Look at this. There's like can't see bugger all in this view, can you? When you're coming through that castle section, but uh, Perez defending very well at the moment. Let's see what what Theo Porcher can do as we sit on board with another camera angle. I don't really use the camera angles very much. I just normally use the telecam or the lap cam, so you can see where both drivers are at the same time. But He's going for it with Perez. He will get... Well, they'll both have... Uh, Perez is 1.3 off. He might not have DRS here. This could be all about Tio Porcher's pace as he's the slipstreams, bringing him in very, very close. As soon as he gets that... Right, driving clean air. Let's get this done because your DRS wing's about to open. Go on, get in clean air. Get in clean air. Go to the left. Go to the left. Nah, he's not... He's not having it. He's not happy enough. It's pulled him very, very close, but couldn't make it work. Let's quickly check in with Lando Norris, who's right on the back of Pierre Gasly. He should be able to get this done into this DRS zone. As well, the DRS zone is just coming up next, but Gasly goes defensive, takes that inside, but Lando Norris will get this move done because he's going to have that DRS for extra pace coming through as Tio Porcher still on the back of Sergio Perez in that Mercedes, who's making that car as wide as possible here when it's um, proving to be a little bit annoying. Let's give Thierry Porcher a little bit of a boost with some battery and see what he can do because if he can get it done before the castle section that would be very very helpful as he's going to pull get that foot down where that acceleration doesn't quite get it done. We'll settle in behind. Eight laps to go. So you can see behind us there is Sergio Perez. We're not getting the little things that flick up to say show the replay. I don't know why. But um, yeah, Porcher has now overtaken Perez. Norris is hunting down that final point playing position in the sprint race as well, which will be great for him starting from 15th. Um, we're in looking like we're in a good position right now. So Perez is behind Tio Porcher. In front of him, he's got a bit of space towards Lance Stroll, but he should be able to catch the Aston Martin as well. So yeah, not going too badly. Let's give Norris a little bit of a boost with a bit of battery so he can get very, very close to Oscar Piastri and see what he can do. As he said, Lando Norris does have a faster car, is a better driver. So the tyres are looking fine at the moment. We may have to ease off Porcher a little bit, but generally the race is looking good. Both drivers doing well as Lando Norris has a look at the inside but doesn't get it done. He does have a little ah because he fails that overtake, but you can see the pace he's got over Piastri. It's, uh, it's very clear to see that the Haas is much quicker than the Aston Martin this year. And that's good to see. Thierry Porcher is over a second behind Lance Stroll, so may not catch that top four. But um, we are in a very good position with both drivers. That is good to see. If Norris can get one more spot, he will be up into, um, into the point-paying positions for the sprint race. 
and he has just got it done. I came back just in time to see that as there's going to be a little battle down towards the DRS zone. Now the thing is here, if Lando just edges in front, he's not going to get DRS. But if it stays as it is, he will get the DRS. Oh no, they will both get DRS actually because they're within a second of George Russell ahead of them. But this should allow Lando to have that drag just coming down the start and finish straight. We'll even give him the last bit of battery that he can use as well to get out of this corner on the inside. And he should now have a launch with the battery. Is he going to deploy it? He's not really deploying it. He's going to keep that inside line again though and get round Oscar Piastri. Then use the battery and uh, hopefully make that move stick. As poor chair loses out to Charles Leclerc. Oh no, he hasn't. He's caught up to Charles Leclerc. Bloody hell. These two battling in front has meant that poor chair is now very much in the mix of the battle for fourth. And he's very much in the battle for fourth. This is incredible driving from Theo Porcher, to be honest. Given that he's got a 50% setup, it's uh, an unbelievable drive from the young Frenchman. Can he get this move done? I'm sort of like, do we top up for the last... We're going to sit behind them and get DRS. Let's top up for a little bit. We need to focus on Norris has got clean air, so we're going to top up with him as well. As Theo Porcher looks to get it done. He does get it done. What a move on Charles Leclerc. Theo Porcher just plonking it up the inside. And that's a wonderful manoeuvre from Theo Porcher. I just didn't expect that at all. I did not expect that in that section of the track. Because now he's going to come down and have a drag race again. Leclerc gets it back. But um, this should be suiting Theo Porcher fine. Let's not deny him of his battery that he might be able to use. He says he's lost the position. But I think he's going to be fine. Because he can drag his way down. And be on that inside. And you can see it's Stroll causing... A little bit of a traffic jam up there because he doesn't have DRS. So, yeah, this is a, an interesting position for both drivers. Poor Chair just sits in behind Leclerc. But I, I'm, I'm thinking we will get this. We'll get up to fourth place. We should have the power in the car, the pace in the car. And um, as long as Stroll, you know, we need Leclerc to pass Stroll, really, so that we can try and double overtake. But uh, yeah, Norris up to 8th, he's uh, catching up to the back of this train as well, so he may run out of laps, but he's back in the points. Norris has overtaken Russell to get up to 7th, and you can see now Russ Norris is right on the back of his teammate, and he is going for this. He is driving aggressively, he's doing a good job. We're actually going to have to ease off Theo's tyres, I'm not sure he's going to make it to the end, um, which will affect his race. But poor chair battling with Perez, poor chair... I'm, yeah, I'm not too sure what's happened here. Is he? Had, he didn't say he had a spin. He hasn't had anything there, but he's lost a lot of pace. He obviously got like forced out of the corner or closed out or something. But uh, both Haas drivers in the points. Three laps to go. <laughs> Tough end, I think, this one. Theo Porcher having a look down into the castle section. Such a dangerous place to try and do an overtake. He's trying to make something work. We're following Lando Norris here as we just sit... Behind these two, is the Haas going to have the drag there for Theo Porcher? Sergio Perez putting up a good battle. It looks like Orlando. Oh, I thought might have a look up the inside of his teammate, but not making it work. I'm sort of thinking, do we... Let's give Theo Porcher a bit of a boost to try and get this move done. Because I think... Oh, Theo Porcher's off! Right in front of us. He's gone off. That's going to kill his tyres. Um, is he out? Is he out? It's not... Oh man, we we had the onboard view with Lando. Theo Porcher pushing for the move on Sergio Perez and just loses the back end as he hits the kerb. Oh, I think that's going to be Theo Porcher out of the points. He's dropped down to 17th. I think we uh, I think we just retire the car, right? How do I do that? Let's uh, ignore that, retire the car because he's got major front wing damage. He's out of the points, save the engine components and uh, get him in now it does open up Norris to have a go at Perez so um, I think on the final lap let's get the battery deployed and see what Lando Norris can do I think he's on aggressive isn't he he is already on aggressive and look at this pace from Lando in the car with the extra battery deployment and the DRS flies past Sergio Perez something that Tio Porcher couldn't do was struggling but um, yeah Lando Norris looks like he's gonna secure fifth place in this one which is absolutely huge so Lando Norris comes around the place where Theo Porcher had his little incident. He takes it comfortably and uh, gets through. And now it's just a long straight. And he's not only overtaken Sergio Perez. He's put one and a half seconds between himself 
and Sergio Perez, or one second at least, which is just absolutely phenomenal driving from Lando from 15th to 5th in the sprint race. Unfortunately for Thierry Porcheris, 8th to did not finish, but, you know, we don't mind that. One driver up there is good. Um, I've got confidence in Thierry Porcher that he'll make it up in the race. So into the strategy we go, but we do just need to replace uh, the car parts for Thierry Porcher, which is good, because luckily I've manufactured enough for everybody um and then we go and have a look at the strategy so i'm thinking you know we go for something absolutely outrageous we're going to go medium medium soft push push it's not there's not a lot of degradation around here we may even be able to get another soft in here in fact lando's near the front isn't he let's start he's got three sets of softs that he can use which is awesome if there's a unexpected safety car or something and then guess you want what, 39 seconds quicker to do that. You want as much time on the softs, I imagine, as possible. So 39 seconds is the quickest we can get. Oh no, 40. We can get 40 seconds there. Let's go for that for 40 seconds. Lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely stuff for Lando there. And then Porcher at the back. He may have to try something a little bit different. Um... Could, we could do a two-stop. Start on the hards. I'm wondering, can you do a soft... No, you can't do a soft, medium, two-stop. Start on the hards. 33, 34, 34 is the most we can get. So, we'll go one stop with Theo. There's probably going to be a safety car, though, isn't there? There's a hundred percent previous experience of safety cars in Azerbaijan, so I think actually we go something like this because get as many places off the start line as we can with a soft tire, and then play it by ear. I'd say Lando's strategy. I want to be locked in. I think that's a good strategy to have where he's near the front, and hopefully he can gain places off the start as well, which would be awesome. Um, we will underfuel the cars because. The chance of a safety car are so high. But yeah, if we can get C.O. Porcher to push, gain places off the start, that's a bonus. And then we can potentially go to the hards and just see it out if we don't want to do a two-stop. But let's wait and see. So Lando Norris up to fifth. C.O. Porcher right at the back. This is going to be an interesting start. It's red lights. We're away. And uh, you can see we've underfueled the car by four kilograms from the off. It's not a good start from Lando Norris. Uh, he's actually lost a place to Sergio Perez straight away. His reactions there were awful. Uh, checking in at the back, Thierry Porcher is just chilling out. And I think, you know, let's just make sure he gets round the track um, and doesn't just cause too many issues. Uh, yeah, Lando will leave on will leave on normal for now. But it's going to be a very interesting race. And we'll, we'll stay with the first lap to see what happens. The Perez starting on the mediums, I think. Got a few medium runners up here. So, yeah, Norris gets past Perez. I'm expecting Norris to jump a few people here. If we can jump Verstappen, who's our main rival in the Drivers' and the Constructors' Championship, then that would be very good to get that done. It's going to be very interesting. Poor Chair is still last, uh, not having the confidence to make any moves, which you can sort of understand after spinning in uh, in the sprint race. He wants to just get round and see what see what places he can make up naturally as Lando is doing a very good job he is on the back of both Red Bulls is, are the Red Bulls going to let them fight or are they going to keep Verstappen on the slower tyre in front of Leclerc that will be interesting to see but yeah good start from Lando started fifth still in fifth lost a place to Perez got it back from Perez um, I'd expect to see a little bit more from T.O. Porcher if I'm honest I thought he would have overtaken someone on the first lap I know we've put him on don't be too aggressive but he needs to make something happen. Uh, otherwise, his strategy of starting on the soft tyre is pretty flawed, to be honest. But, yeah, not too bad as we come into the final uh, little section of the first lap. And, uh, yeah, Lando Norris. I don't know if Leclerc and Verstappen have potentially put new new engines in or something, but they've got a hell of a lot of pace. So, Thierry Porcher is off the bottom of the, uh, of the board, and he's overtaken Nick De Vries, who was uh, just left very isolated there without DRS. Lovely. Poor chair gets a similar move done on uh, Nick DeVries' teammate in the Alpha Tauri, Daniel Ricciardo. Under DRS, Ricciardo didn't have it. And uh, Thierry Poirier can pull away up to 18. 
Lando Norris has caught the Red Bulls. It's Max Verstappen and Charles Leclerc who are having a little battle. Um, and you can see Max Verstappen out in front. Leclerc going a little bit defensive to try and keep uh, Thierry Pochet behind. Nine laps in. We're doing all right. Fifth and um, Thierry Pochet has been overtaken by Daniel Ricciardo. Bloody hell, Tio. Come on. Sort it out. You've got a fast car there, mate. I know you have. You know you have. We need to make this count. So Lando Norris has passed Lance Stroll into fourth place. Lance Stroll seems to be going backwards a little bit at the moment because um, Leclerc Verstappen, uh, well, Verstappen's out in front. He's making use of those medium tyres very well indeed. But um, yeah, it's going to be a tough one. We've, we've upped poor chairs overtaking aggressiveness so that he can actually start having a go at the drivers in front because we need him to climb that order and Ocon is over a second behind Sonoda in 16th. So it could come down to a pit stop strategy call for T.O. Porcher to see what we do but no no incidents yet no yellow flags nothing like that but Norris is on the back of Charles Leclerc after passing Lance Stroll. Lance Stroll must have damage because he is dropping off at quite a rate from behind us there as uh, Lando Norris having a little look but can't get anything done just yet. He might actually get it done here because Charles Leclerc is not going to have DRS and Lando Norris opens up his rear wing and then now move to the left. Now move to the left, Lando. You can do this. Now he just sits behind him, waiting patiently, trying to get the move done. Let's put you up to aggressive. Be a bit more aggressive here. He doesn't have DRS, so you can, do this. You can get these overtakes done, I think, on Charles Leclerc. And there we go. He pulls out, has a little look. He does have that rear wing open. Trying to try and get in the clean air. He is in the clean air to try and get this done. He's up the inside. He is being aggressive. And he's got that done. Lovely stuff from Lando Norris there. That is what we need. He will have the outside here, but he'll have the inside for the next corner. We'll give him a bit more battery as well to try and help him try and help him along. So that's a mode push now, please. Because he's just slipped in behind Charles Leclerc again. Come on, Lando. You're better than that, mate. You're better than that. He's defending well, but you can easily get past him, buddy. Okay, Thierry Bourget is going to be pitting yeah, soon. And I'm wondering if we go for something a little bit cheeky here. Do we just go, uh, let's go, yeah, confirm that. New strategy, I want to get rid of this one. Yeah, there we go. Add new stint onto the hards. Do the hards make it? Oh, they do just, yeah. You're going onto the hards. It's going to be apparently eight seconds slower than this. But with one stop, it could allow him to jump some spots, get a potential safety car. Uh, yeah, onto the hard tyres for you. Because uh, poor chair should, I should have got that call done in time to get him in for, box, box. into the pit lane. So he's pushed those softs, he gained two places, it's not a huge amount. But hopefully now just the one stop will allow him to, to jump quite a few places. But we'll have to wait and see. I've got to hope for a good stop as well. It needs to be a good stop for this to work. As Lando Norris is still fourth, sitting just behind Charles Leclerc. George Russell did gain some pace on him, setting the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, but nothing else came of that as Thierry Chair is in. It is a good stop, 2.02. That, uh, that is lovely, right. So that is done. How long does he take in the pits? 27 seconds. So he is 11 seconds. Oh, there we go. So he's 41 seconds off the leader. So when everyone else pits, what's 42 minus 27? 13-ish, uh, 15. So he could come out here. It could, it could be a very good call. We'll have to wait and see. Because people that are twenty, people that are twenty seconds off the leader, right? Albon. That's twenty-two difference. He did a pit stop of twenty-four, so four, yeah, it could be points. It could be points. We'll have to wait and see. He's got to work hard on those tyres. He's got to make it work. I think while he's in clean air as well, let's get him. In doing as fast as he possibly can. So Lando in the pits, onto the medium tyres, a decent stop for him as well, 2.154. Um, this will be interesting now to see how Lando can uh, fight back through this group. Obviously we've stopped a lot quicker than everybody else. He's gonna come out fighting with Albon. Albon's just gonna get in front of him, I think. But um, we should be in a pretty decent position. Poor chair has made up that gap to De Vries, who's 11 seconds off Daniel Ricciardo, which is pretty awful. But fresh tyres for both drivers. It's sort of all up to them now, isn't it? Norris needs to reclimb the positions and get into a good position. That means when he puts the softs on at the end, he can also go and attack. So he is on high risk overtakes, which could be an error at this point. 
But um, I think he's. I think he's all right. I think he, sh he should be all right. Yeah, Norris has made light work of Albon and Bottas, both of them being passed on the home straight very, very easily with DRS. Not a very exciting replay to show, so I didn't show it. But yeah, he, he's going to have enough pace to climb back up. And he is 20 seconds off the leader, so he'll get first place when everybody pits. Um, and then it's just a case of what can he do with, with that lead. He should really pass Magnussen on this start finish straight as well he's going to just settle in nicely behind him on these fresh medium tires and see what he can do here he's got a much much quicker car and he's hopefully going to make this move work and stick down this start finish straight we'll have a look at it because we're watching it live anyway and just needs to open the drs swing out to the side get the move done if he can oh he's gone faked it right gone to the inside and uh, yeah, Lando will be getting that one done on Magnus and can break later with the fresher tyres and uh, moves up another spot into 11th. Okay, so Carlos Sainz has pitted as well. He's now down to 10th. Norris is just easily passing everyone on these fresh tyres. Um, again, just a standard DRS overtake getting on the inside for the first corner. Got that done nicely. Tio Porcher is making some inroads. Um, you can see he's lapping two seconds a lap faster than Nick DeVries in front of him. Uh, he needs to pass him, and he has just passed him, which is good. So, yeah, I don't know what he is off the leader now. He's 40 seconds off, so 20 seconds again. Puts him just outside the points when everyone else pits. So it'll be very interesting to see how that works. But, uh, yeah, everyone else still has to pit, and Norris is climbing up nicely. Okay, so we've come back at a strange time. Lando Norris is having a go at Perez, but Gasly pitted. And I predicted poor chair to come out near Gasly so if he can overtake Pierre Gasly while he's in the pits it's going to be close I don't think he's quite going to get Gasly but the prediction was sort of right because poor chair's just going to come in to this first corner now so if we put the battery on and can catch Gasly it doesn't mean we've undercut them pretty well here at Baku obviously our tyres are going to be a lot older but um, Gasly's gone for the medium so if we push our hards we may catch him and that would be useful because everyone else in the front still needs to pit. So it could be a net win for poor chair to get him back into the points after starting this race right at the back. But it will be an interesting one to see how it goes. It's still a 17 second gap to the front. So Norris will be in the lead when the other guys pit. Um, Verstappen 58% tyres. Russell and Leclerc 49.45. Well, you'd imagine they'll all be coming in pretty soon as uh, it does look like Thio Porcher is gaining on Pierre Gasly by quite some margin actually it's looking pretty good for our young French driver right now we adapted his his uh, strategy tactics his pit strategy tactics and seems to be paying off so now he's caught up a little bit to Pierre Gasly we can let him do his own race and see how far he goes Norris is in the middle of a DRS train it looks like where he's going to be trying to overtake Perez um, but yeah, let's see how it goes. He has just overtaken Piastri, which is awesome. Let's see. Let's see how that went. How did this move happen? As uh, he came out of the corner, just had the inside. Yeah, on those fresh medium tyres. And got it done. Still got the DRS off of uh, Perez in front of him, which is absolutely lovely. And he's on the attack against Perez and may even get this move done as well. And he does up to fifth. Yes. Right, now let's push you. Because you've got that battery, you need to set some fast laps now. You've got eight seconds in front of you of clean air, so go, go, go. Okay, Verstappen has pitted, so we've actually pushed Lando Norris on this perfect lap. As uh, fastest lap is set by Lando Norris there. And Norris is out in front of Verstappen, and there is traffic for Verstappen as well. Lando Norris doing really well pushing, these, uh, pushing this battery, pushing these laps. To see what he can do. He's 1.4 off Stroll, who's 9 seconds off Leclerc and Russell, whose tyres must be dying now. Yeah, because Verstappen has pitted off his mediums before they've pitted off their softs. Unbelievable. Yeah, Lando's in with a good chance here. Obviously, he's got another pit stop to make, but he is in with a good chance. A very good chance. As uh, Porsche finds himself up into 15th because it's another pit stop, so he's doing well as well. Oh, we've got a yellow flag. There's been a crash as Lando Norris just gets this move done. Before a safety car, Joe has crashed on turn 16 as Lando goes up into third. It's going to be the same instant, I think, that T.O. Porcher had. Does he just catch the curb? Yes, he does. Spins around into the barrier. He didn't learn from what T.O. Porcher did in the sprint race. But Lando Norris is past 
these guys and he's going to have about a 10 second gap from when Leclerc and Russell pit so yeah this is looking very very interesting right and there you have it Leclerc and Russell pit Stroll pits in as well and uh, that gives Lando Norris a quite a good lead three second lead over Carlos Sainz he needs to extend this as much as he can before his next pit stop which will see him end on the soft tyre which is the quicker tyre I think we should just check that generally um, if I edited this to then say this was mediums is that quicker as it's saying it's exactly the same can we make this quicker that's going to be one second slower if we get on the softs earlier it's slower yeah okay now nice. so we are in sort of the peak position uh, return to straight and unsaved yes now I'm sort of but we've got we've got the lead can we if we bin this off I mean you have to ease off the tires a bit it's going to be, I mean, you need an extra four, six laps than what we've planned. No, I think we stick with it. We stick with the strategy that we made and go with it. We've, we've changed Theo's and it seems to be working for him. He's up into the points now that everyone's pit, pitted. So I think he'll have a battle on his hands with Stroll. But if a safety car comes and we can get poor chair on softs, that would be epic for him. Because he, it's a 24 second gap, isn't it? So yeah, if we pit him again, he'll come out in 16th. It's not dreadful. It's really not dreadful if we pit Tio Porcher again. But at the moment, he has got Gasly pulling him around as Norris leads the race. So let's see what happens. So Lando Norris is coming under a bit of pressure, but you know, we are getting away from the pack behind us. And I think it's going to be, he's got a lot of work to do on those soft tyres when he goes on them at the end. But yeah, it's going to be, Verstappen's looking after his tyres really well, to be fair. If the two behind us can battle, a little bit more that would be pretty useful but I get the feeling Verstappen's holding his tyres back because he knows they're both going to pass us from the pit stop so yeah, it's, yeah. I don't I, honestly I don't know where Lando is going to finish in this race okay Norris is coming in this lap Porcher's up to seventh and I'm sort of thinking we do we could do a similar strategy for both drivers here there's a big enough gap behind them that we pit them both at the same time or do we keep poor chair out? He's, he's under pressure from Stroll, so he'll drop there. Piastri will probably get him as well. Giovinazzi's just coming out on fresh tyres. It's going to be... I think we gamble. I think we gamble. And we go... Oh, they're not brand new. The mediums are quicker. The mediums are one second a lap quicker. They're 1.3 seconds a lap. He should be able to nurse these to the end. He should be able to nurse those softs to the end so both drivers coming in with lots of life left on these current tyres they have but I think it's the right thing to do to see what we can do in in these last few laps 20 no less than 20 laps to go 16 laps to go right Norris will be coming in to the pits from here uh, Verstappen isn't going to have DRS because he's leading the race so right he's in and he needs a good stop he, he needs his team to give him a good stop here so that he can get out and attack those people in front of him as soon as possible. Poor Chair is going to be coming in right behind him as well. This was the strategy we said for Lando. Poor Chairs has been a bit of a mix and match, a bit of a pick and mix strategy, hasn't it, for, uh, for Tio Poor Chair. Lando, it's a good stop, 2.0. He's going to be away. Poor Chair should be coming in as well, so we've timed that pretty well. It's the second fastest pit stop of the race, and Lando is out, and he's got. 10, 12-ish uh, seconds to make up and a bit well, more than that actually 19 seconds to make up so let's push you as hard as you can possibly go we also need to keep an eye on the fuel um, and get from there so poor chair is just coming out did he have a bad stop? 2.1, not terrible again he's got a lot to do but he should be able to catch up and get DRS off a lot of sort of leapfrog with DRS up as it up it goes so I'm hoping that Thierry Pujol gets these moves done pretty quickly. High overtake aggression from you. You've got peak confidence. Lando, we're going to do the same for you. You're already on it. So, yeah. It's a decent race. We'll, we'll keep an eye on the fuel. Um, I think on fresh tyres, we should be pretty good anyway. So, let's see how we go. So, Lando Norris is back in DRS range of the two drivers in front, which is Charles Leclerc and George Russell. It's going to be touch and go if he makes Verstappen and signs. Um, that is a big gap that he's got to close there, but... 
He could be back on a podium. I've got confidence he can overtake Russell and Leclerc from this position. Um, I think the fuel should be fine as well. Should be okay at the conserve rate. But um, Diego Porcher up to 13th, so he's not out of the points either completely yet. Well, I mean, he is at the moment, but he's not out. Look at Lando's looking, trying to force his way through the middle of them. Jump to the side, Lando. Jump to the side. You've got the pace. Swing left. New fastest lap from Lando Norris as well while he's saving his, uh, conserving his fuel, which is not a bad, bad thing to do. I mean, he'll be getting some mega slipstream there. Getting clean air. Swing to the side. That's not clean air, is it? That's still behind the other one. But you should pass George Russell. Oh, gone up the inside. Get him up the inside with the DRS later on the brakes. Lovely, lovely stuff. And he's now sitting behind Charles Leclerc, who he should pass relatively easily, I want to say. But, um, yeah, this is going to prove anything. Ten laps to go. Lando Norris overtakes George Russell. We just watched it live, so don't know if you see that one again. And uh, Theo Porcher has got lots of battery, so let's give him a little push as well to get through. As uh, Lando can just sit behind now, he should be able to get this done. And he'll be back on the podium, and then how, how much of a lap quicker is he going than the two in front? Two seconds a lap quicker than Max Verstappen. And he is eight seconds off the leader with ten to go. That's doable, because he only needs four laps at two laps a second quicker. He just needs to pass Charles Leclerc as soon as he can, to be honest. And Charles Leclerc is defending really well. Is, is, he, is Lando going to go around the outside here? He's going to give it a go, isn't he? Lando, you cheeky bugger. He's giving it a go around the outside. It is going to give Charles Leclerc the DRS, I'd imagine. But the soft tyres showing their pace there. And Lando is not out of winning this race. He is not out of it yet. Come on, Lando. And he's absolutely gobbled up that time to Carlos Sainz. It's ridiculous how quick these soft tyres are when everybody else is on used tyres. I mean, we're pushing them quite hard. I think Verstappen's taking it easy still. But uh, we are doing very well. You see poor Chair, he's pushing. He's got the fastest lap of the Grand Prix at the moment. But Lando Norris is going to get DRS here on Carlos Sainz. And it's going to be a race to the first corner. And with a good number of laps to go, we're in a very good position with Lando Norris. We really are. He's just going to see if he can make up that time to Max Verstappen and have a go at potentially uh, getting the lead of this race and winning his, what, third in four. It'll be his third win in four races, as you can see, poor chair, right on the back of Alex Albon. He should get that done, um, hopefully get that done. And then he's not too far off Bottas, who's not too far off Perez. I mean, even poor chair, if he pulls his finger out, could get up to eighth, which would be incredible from starting at the back. So you can see him there. Look at the pace. Look at the pace of that Haas compared to the McLaren absolutely amazing to see and yeah come on boys come on and Lando Norris I've just jumped on board as he sets the fastest lap and gets past Carlos Sainz and now boy you go and you've got your fuel back in line as well which means you will and Lando Norris just needs to close down on Max Verstappen as you can see here DRS open goes into the first corner just aggressive comfortable on those soft tires gets that one done 3.2 seconds to make up. We are lapping two seconds a lap quicker. We should be on him before the end of the race, which would be absolutely massive. And uh, Theo Porcher doing a fantastic job as well. This is superb racing from the Haas boys. Theo Porcher has overtaken a couple of cars. Uh, he got Perez earlier on in the Mercedes, and he's just gone around the outside of Bottas to go up to ninth. So lovely stuff from Theo Porcher. He's really pushing that car well. From last to ninth, Lando Norris. Um, he's doing a fantastic job. You can see Max Verstappen just in front of us. We are closing that gap. 1.9 seconds is the difference now. Theo Porcher is overtaking Pierre Gasly, having a little look around the outside at first. And then uh, I think it's Lance Stroll in front of him actually went defensive, which allowed Theo Porcher to get potentially both drivers. I don't know if we'll see this at the end. It does look like both drivers. Yeah, well done, Theo Porcher. And Lando Norris is right on the back of Max Verstappen with three laps to go. He's in a fantastic position right now. Theo Porcher does have a big gap to Lance Stroll in front. It was uh, um, Oscar Piastri he passed. But yeah, you never know. Bit of a um, powertrain issue, an engine problem for Theo Porcher, but that's not a problem. It just becomes our practice engine from there. But Lando Norris is gaining on Max Verstappen with three laps to go. Can he pull a, hat? Can he pull a rabbit out of the hat here? What a race it'll be for Lando Norris. 
Max Verstappen knows he's got to go defensive. It's 60% tyres versus 50% tyres. So there's going to be a lot of driver skill involved here. I think, T.O. poor chair, we, we just say you're happy. I mean, say driver skill, DRS. He's flown past Max Verstappen there. He's absolutely flown past Max Verstappen. T.O. poor chair, we bring his tyres down a little bit. In fact, we're going to go to standard, just get him to the end of the race, make sure he makes it. Let's try and pull away from Max Verstappen as Norris takes the lead of the Grand Prix in Baku. So as we start the final lap of the Grand Prix, Lando Norris is 1.87 seconds in front of Max Verstappen. A fantastic Grand Prix from the Englishman. I'm so happy we managed to sign him. Uh, poor Chair settled nicely into seventh as well. He should be bringing that home pretty comfortably. And let's get Lando just to give it everything he's got with the battery and uh, see what we can do. In fact, there's probably not no need to, to risk that, but... We'll get it in this sort of technical section and see what we can do. But Lando Norris is having an amazing season in this Haas. And I know it's tough on poor Chair because he's going to finish seventh. But he's gone from last to seventh. Like, we've got a great car. We've got two good drivers. This season is looking very positive for Haas. We've got big regulations coming next year, but we've got plenty of races to do before that. But I'm hoping if we can wrap this up, because poor old Jack Doohan isn't getting any race time. I want both these drivers in the car as much as possible to uh, to get us through this season as high up as possible. And we're doing a great job. Let's um, let poor Chair bring this one home. You can see he's got a nice gap to Piastri behind him. And Lando Norris is coming round the last few corners of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. And he's going to be coming home with another victory for Haas. 2.5 seconds ahead of Max Verstappen as he comes down the far section down the home straight he'll be taking the chequered flag and you absolutely love to see it don't you love to see it a British driver in my team winning a Grand Prix live on camera it's been superb there we go he's going to come and cross the start finish line and he's won it Lando Norris you are the winner of the Azerbaijan Baku Grand Prix get in and uh, poor chair we'll, we'll watch him over the line as well he's actually is under a little bit of pressure um, from here so we can get him to push because he's got a little bit of stuff all left over he does get through that final corner I was a little bit worried that he might not but um, poor chair having a little battle with Piastri behind him Piastri having better tyres after those mediums poor chair still needs to work on his smoothness he does eat away at his tyres a little bit, but it'll be a race to the line with Piastri having DRS. Can Porcher hold on to that seventh spot? And he's not going to pull out from behind him, so Porcher will take home seventh place. Lando Norris picking up first place in this Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Superb. The winning driver. He's on fire. He is on fire for Haas this season. It's just amazing. It's such a good season for us. And there he is at the top of the podium. He's going to be up there ahead of Max Verstappen and Carlos Sainz. And um, is that us? His race engineer? Don't know who that is. But he will be lifting the trophy for Haas at Azerbaijan. Absolutely superb, Lando. Get in. Come on. I'm well happy. There you go. Lando Norris up four places with the win and the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Tio Pochet up 13 places to seventh doing a really really good job in the drivers then Lando stays top he extends his lead by 14 points over Max Verstappen the upper chair actually dropped down two places and in the constructors well they're hanging on aren't they Red Bull they're just in front of us they get good two fit we need to finish above them with both drivers that's what we need in the fastest pit stop we're absolutely smashing it yet again so next up is the United States Grand Prix in Miami um, obviously we won't be doing that one live on camera what have we got only one failed we've got two destroyed things on Theo's car but we've got enough money we've got a good car which also means you're generally not buying um, you don't have to buy as much and we've got two very good uh, two very good drivers as well which is absolutely awesome so next one we'll be back for let's come back for should we come back for another sprint I think we'll come back for another sprint let's go back for Austria a very quick circuit a very fast circuit should suit our car very very well but thank you so much for watching leave a like subscribe if you're new and leave me a comment down below about how you think this is going um it's well it's going very well isn't it but let me leave leave a comment it always helps the algorithm and it lets me know there's still interaction with this series thank you so much for watching i'll catch you in the next one cheers